Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Back to talk about where you started from and where you're heading. You know, your past does not have to determine your destiny. And your past does not have to sabotage your future. Okay, listen to this. God gave me a long time ago an analogy. And I feel like sometimes there are some of you who will not even consider coming to the Lord. And the reason you won't consider coming to the Lord is because you keep looking in the rearview mirror at the things you've done and the things you've gotten caught up in. But let me tell you this. When you're thinking about the lies you told and the sins you committed and uh, the people you did wrong and the drugs you did or maybe times when you sold your body into prostitution or maybe you had an abortion or maybe you did your parents wrong or maybe you did your children wrong and you abused them or molested them, whatever. I mean, it can get real dark when we start going down the pathway of our dark pasts. We know it can, it can be like that. Some of us carry guilt that we cannot shake because somebody died because of something stupid, some poor decision we made. But let me tell you this, no matter how far down you have fallen. No matter how excruciating the memories are, no matter how ashamed you are of what you had become, there is a God. He has a little uh, body of water, figuratively speaking, that he calls the sea of forgetfulness. And he places your sins in mind when we ask him to. He places them into the sea of forgetfulness. And if you can think as far as the east is from the west, that is how far removed our sins are from his mind because he chooses to forget what we've done. Now, you know, it's not a total forget, but what I mean is he no longer holds you accountable for that. And he gives each and every one of us a chance for a new start, you guys. You have to believe this. It's not something where it's a hopeless situation for us because it's not. As long as we can breathe in and as long as God is looking at us and he's with us, y'all, he's not going anywhere without us. There's always hope. There's hope for you. You're not a lost cause. You are not. I don't care what the enemy says about you. I don't care what your mama says about you, what your pappy says about you, what your kids say about you. I don't care what you say about you. You are not a lost cause. Not at all. Let me show you something. This is what the Lord showed me. You got a little piece of paper here with some lines in it. Okay. Now you see these grooves right here, right? Okay. Now imagine this as a racetrack. Okay. And when you look at the racetrack, you've got, ah, uh, let's see, what can I do? Okay, let's say that the church folk, this is the line for the church folk, and they were raised in church. So they started from the very beginning and by the time you even think about 
darkening the doors with your contamination. I'm being melodramatic, because that's how some of you think. You think you're not worthy to walk into God's church. Oh, yes, you are. Ah, uh, now these people, let's say the finishing line is right here. And these people are right in here because they've been raised, they've been taught, they know, they know the whole culture of God. And then here you are. You're way back here. You're not even in the line. You're so far behind because you already started off with the odds against you from birth. From birth. And here you are put putting and struggling through life and making one bad decision after another and one bad decision after another. And you just, just I mean, you're basically off the map. You're off the radar. You're so far behind. Now, here are your church folks right in here, right about where my fingertips are, right? Here's the finishing line, okay? Now, here you are down here, and this is what's happening. You decide to give your heart to the Lord. Listen to this now. I want you to really see this. You are giving your heart to the Lord, and now look at where you're starting. You're way back here, but now... You're serious. You're genuine. You are so tired of what you left behind and tired of you. And you give it all you have. You dig in with your hands and your feet. I mean, you dig in with all fours and you claw your way to righteousness with everything you have. And you learn to love and you learn to forgive because trust me, you're going to have to forgive because... As long as people are on this earth, you're going to have to forgive. And you are forgiving and, and you're loving and you're, you're getting hurt and you're crying and you're struggling and you fall behind and you stumble on your own two feet at times. But next thing you know, you're starting to get the hang of it and you're experiencing God along the way. And as you experience God, you find that you're being healed. And you're being cleansed. And all that old soot is actually not even visible on you anymore. And the, the stench from your old lifestyle isn't even recognizable because you're such a glowing, loving person. And next thing you know, you're way up here. Now the church folks are about here too. And they're looking at you wondering, what are you doing up here with us? Because you know, we know where you came from. But guess what? They started from right about in here because they were raised there. So they were already here when you got started, when you were off the map. And here you come and you have bypassed them. Now, this is what I want to ask you. From where they woke up to the point where they really got serious, look at how far they came. That's about two inches on this piece of paper. And look at how far you came. You started way back here. And look at your progress. Hey, baby, I'm here to tell you that you have made phenomenal progress. There is phenomenal hope for you. And God is pulling for you. God is pulling. You know what he says in his word? This will encourage you. He says... The, okay, there was a period in the Bible where Jesus was sitting down at some men's home and he was gathered with, with men and, and, and disciples and all of that. And uh, this woman walks in, just walks in. You know, she's not supposed to be mixing with men's company because women were second class citizens. Back then they were about fourth class citizens. But anyway, here she comes in, tears running down her face with this expensive alabaster box of this expensive oil and she opens it up and she pours it on to Jesus and she's un she's anointing his feet and she's rubbing this oil on him and oh it's just the aromas filling the house and the disciples are looking at her looking at her saying does he know what sort of woman is touching him hmm. well their minds were already defiled so we won't even go there 
The point is, this woman came from a dirty lifestyle, a shameful lifestyle, and with all her heart, she pours her love, she pours her sorrows, she pours her worship all over this Lord and Savior, and she gives all she has, this expensive bottle of, 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 of ointment, and she's just, she's anointing him. She may not even understand fully that she's anointing him for his burial. But as the disciples fuss, Jesus turns and he tells them, he says, when I came in, you gave me no hug. You gave me no kiss. You, you didn't uh, anoint me and, and, and do all this, make this ado and this fuss over me. From the minute this woman came in, she has anointed, she has poured her love, she has given to me. She's preparing me for my burial. And he asked one of the disciples a question. He said, which of the two people would you say loves the most? The one who has been forgiven for little, like church folk, or the one who has been forgiven much, like you, me, and that woman? And the disciple answered logically, well, the one who's been forgiven much. And Jesus said, yeah, you have well said. And he described, this woman hasn't stopped from the minute she came in the door. She has poured. And he says, she or he or whoever who has been forgiven much loves much. And let me tell you, you who have been the base the, the, the bottom, the, the gutter of society. I've been there too. Yeah. Lo learn to love much because you're so grateful for the love that you receive from God because you know from whence you came and you know how little you deserved it. You didn't deserve it any less than the church people because they had to stumble through their flesh and their sins too, whether they acknowledged them or not. But because you are acknowledging and willing to acknowledge where you are and where you're not, you're the one God can use richly. You're the one God can pour himself through. Because you will give, you will give everything you got to clean up your act for the sake of the God who has loved you with the kind of love you've searched for all your life. Listen, give your heart to the Lord. Let him shower you with his love. You will never find any other better than his. You'll never find any similar to his on this earth because his is supernatural. It's not normal. And he loves the filthy ones. He loves the broken ones. He loves the damaged goods. He loves us with an everlasting love. And for those of us who feel like nobodies, who have been treated like nobodies all our lives, he heals that, and he helps you to respect, love, and value yourself because you know that God loves you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Come on now. Step on in. Join. Join God's side. Get in on the kingdom. The people in the church are good. They're a blessing. They will help you learn how to get close to God. But trust me, you'll grow much faster than they because you came from a different world. And the contrast is so obvious to you that you're scratching, digging, and climbing and giving everything to reach the top, the, the mountaintop where God's presence is.
and where God's presence abides. Don't give up on yourself. Don't pass that church up and say, no, I won't walk in because those people won't accept me. It's not up to them to accept you. There are some in that church, whatever church you're looking at, that will love you into the kingdom. But you got to give it a chance. You will never know if you never go. And while you're waiting to find a church you feel like you can walk in, get along with God and ask him this. Say this prayer. Say it with me. Repeat the words. Father, I may not get it all, but I ask you to forgive me for my sin. All my sins, those I know about, those I don't know about. Clean me up inside. Heal my broken spirit. Clean out the anger. Clean out my cynicism. Just do a work in me. Remake me. Make me a new person. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart. I can't say I believe everything because I'm really not sure. But please take me on those terms. I'm at least coming through the door. And I'm letting Jesus come into my heart. So I ask you, Lord, to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me and give me your new nature to make it easier for me to transition from my past to your destiny for me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And send someone to help me. You're in. You're in. You know, sometimes church people will say, oh, you have to believe that Jesus was born of a virgin and he was this and he died and he and he was raised again and blah. And they give you all these stipulations of what you have to believe. Let me tell you something, baby. God saved my stanky soul. And I wasn't sure if there was even a God and I told him so. But because he knew how much I wanted to believe, he accepted me with all my doubts and all my fears, he accepted me and he accepts you too. God bless you. God bless you. And I just pray that God will anoint you and saturate you with his beautiful love. It'll make all the difference in the world. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this is your day. Live it up, baby. Celebrate. Because this is the beginning of the first day of your brand new life. God bless you. <laughs>